Hey everyone and welcome back to a new video on the channel. This one is going to be about this thing right here. The idea for this video is to honestly just take a look at this thing because no one's really done that yet. I'm not aware of like a single video out there of like someone literally going over the PCB with the multimeter, measuring resistances and whatnot. So that's the intention for today's video. I will mod this thing, that's why I bought it. But uh, yeah, again, today is really just taking this thing apart. It's st still warm. It's still warm from testing it. Kind of cool. Oops. Already damaging it. Regardless, I did watch the uh, Gamers Nexus teardown, so I should be able to just take this thing apart. And I guess without wasting any more time, I'm gonna get started with a uh, pry tool because, yep, it's glued. There's glue. There's glue all over this thing. Oh god. There you go. There's already a bend in there. It's not too bad. But uh, yeah, this thing is already already damaged. The quality. Regardless, let me set this aside. It's probably gonna fall and at some point you'll hear like a loud noise. Kind of like the uh, the look of this, like uh, the, the exposed vias. Let me show you exactly what I mean. The VS don't have like um, a solder mask on them. So it reminds me of the Kingpin cards. Anyways, let me get my Torx bits ready to go. That's the leaf spring screws taken care of. It's not actually a leaf spring if you take a close look at it. Right, you can see it's just flat. Let me try to separate the heatsink now. Comes right off. Is this the last screw holding the PCB into place? Nope. Not quite. There's one more over here. And there you go. Torn down all the way. Let me clean off that die. I do have to say though, I like the the non-gray underfill something new okay that's it fully cleaned up nice and shiny die you can see the reflection of my camera in it <laughs> i guess i'll just get right into what i wanted to do which is to check the resistances of the voltage rails of this card i have one probe on ground that's about 2.3 the probes themselves are half to 0.6 so this as far as I'm concerned is like the memory controller bad contact there you go better contact as far as I'm concerned this is like the the memory controller so um, 2.4 ohms if you subtract the resistance of the probes itself that's about 2 ohms flat 1.9 1.8 ohms Core, I reckon, is very low. Yeah, it's basically... I and mean, I guess it reads 0.7, which is higher than... 0.5 to 0.6, but it's basically, like, yeah. Can't accurately measure the resistance of the core, because well, my multimeter doesn't have the resolution. Memory, I reckon, is similar to what we see on other cards. Yeah, 12 ohms. I'd expected it to be a bit higher, but 12 ohms. And um, I guess this is memory too. There's a small inductor over here that I'm going to measure. That one reads 177-ish. Let me actually get the microscope to give you a better look at what I'm measuring here. So that's the small inductor that I was measuring. So get the multimeter in view. That's the 177 ohm thing. And there's this smaller inductor right down here. That might be input filtering. Yeah, I reckon it is. Any other voltage rails? Yep, there's another inductor right there. Let me measure that. Okay, it seems to be a higher resistance. 7 kilo ohms. Let me just measure the PCIe data line stuff. Grab a random data line. 850. 
And then another random one. You can see that is also about 850 to 860. I guess I could measure like 12 volts and whatnot too, 3.3 volts. Uh, just because. The thing is though, those aren't really things that you would really have to worry about. Because as long as they're not short, they should be fine. But 3.3 volts, you can see some of the kilo ohms right there, it keeps rising. Now it stopped, so 12.8, 13 kilo ohms. 12 volts PCIe slot. Charging up the capacitors. Yeah, you can see that it's in the kilo ohms. 8 pin, 6.7, 6.8, 6 pin, also roughly the same. If you wanted to know the resistances of like certain voltage rails on this card, because when you're trying to fix one of these, there you go. There's, there's the resistances that you should expect. I reckon the resistances are going to be similar on the A770, um, though maybe there's an ever so slightly different resistance on memory because it uses different memory chips. What I'll do now is I'll just take a closer look around the board under the microscope and um, take a closer look at certain things. The voltage controller right here, which unfortunately does not have a public data sheet. That said, as far as I'm concerned, it does support uh, I2C, so you could just get voltage control. These are resistors, which I reckon are just shunt resistors, which is absolutely something that I'm going to try. Shunt modding this thing, seeing how it reacts. Power stages, there you go. Monolithic power, MP86956. I guess I could look at what exact memory chip's on here. Yeah, so this is Samsung CDI. I don't know whether that is good or bad, because I really, I can tell you, you know, all that you would ever probably want to know about Samsung uh, GDDR5 e die, but yeah, I really don't know too much about G6 and what chips are good for G6. One more thing I'm gonna check right now is uh, what power stages run off of uh, what power input. So starting from the bottom, 8 pin, 6 pin, 8 pin, 6 pin, 8 pin. This would run off of the 6 pin, this phase, and the very top V core phase is 8 pin again. That's interesting. I wonder why they do that. I genuinely have no idea why exactly it is that they did that. Let's see what the memory phase here is running off of. It's running off of the 8 pin. And this memory phase, it's got it capacitors right there. This memory phase is running off of the PCIe slot. This phase right here is running off of the PCIe slot too. And so is this one. So the memory, what I suspect to be the memory controller rail, runs off of the PCIe slot exclusively. This memory phase runs off of the PCIe slot. This runs off of the 8 pin. And the V core constantly switches between the 8 pin and the 6 pin. I guess one more thing that I could do is to check out these, what appear to be I2C headers. So if that is the case, I shall try to see if there's continuity between any of these pads right here and any of the pins on this controller. How would you look at that? So this through hole right there, which goes to this pin of the controller, is continuous to this pad. Let's see if it's continuous to anything else. Nope, doesn't look like it. Interesting. Let's see where this pad goes. It's the via right next to it. So this via right here goes to this pad, and this via right there goes to this pad. Now granted, if this truly is I2C, I could not tell you which pin is what exactly, except that this one's ground, but I could not tell you which one's SCL and which one's SDA. But I guess it's something. You know, it's now confirmed that these pads have continuity to the controller. I guess if you want to know the resistance of like another component on this board, uh, just 
put it into the comments down below, um, and uh, I'll reply with uh, the resistance that I measured. I guess the last thing to do for this video is to talk about what exactly it is that I actually want to do with this. Uh, for starters, um, I definitely want to know how this GPU reacts to um, being power modded, so I will absolutely do a shunt mod on this. Another thing I want to try out is uh, to see how this GPU reacts to being e-powered. Um, again, the datasheet for, for these is not um, available. Uh, I guess if you have an EVC2, you can just easily get voltage control, but I don't have one. So what I want to know is how does one of these GPUs react to the controller being removed and having something like this feed power into it. I guess useful to know because sometimes the power good signals of these controllers is used as a enable for another rail on the board. It could also just be that the GPU itself has like a connection to the power good of this thing and if it's not present the GPU knows that something's up and doesn't start. You know it's, it's those kinds of things that I want to find out. Another thing I'm considering to do uh, is to send this thing to Soyo once I'm done testing this thing because he's got a phase change. I don't. He's got an EVC. I don't. It would kind of be alone with, uh, in that sense, no strings attached. So I wouldn't even care if he killed it. I mean, that's what I bought this thing for, right? So I guess I'll just shoot him an email and see if he's interested. But yeah, I guess uh, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, closer look at one of Intel's Arc GPUs. Hope you enjoyed it. And I do hope to see you guys again in the very next video. Have a good one.